Hi everyone, welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today, Shannon Wood, an art teacher from Maryland, is showing us how to create worm tunnels. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia Gallery. Hi, my name is Shannon Wood and I'm the art teacher here at Middletown Elementary School and I'm going to be creating a series of videos for you through Artsonia's After School Art Club. So you can create these projects at home, over the summer, at your own time and leisure. Feel free to pause the video at any time to get caught up and hopefully we're going to have a good time. All right, so let's get started. Okay, we're ready to get started. To start, you're going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need colored pencils and a black marker. It doesn't have to be permanent. It can be washable, but I'm gonna use a permanent marker. All right, you're gonna start by drawing a curved line right through the center of your page. Horizontal curved line, just like that. You're going to make five dots along this line. They don't have to be very big, but just enough. All right, so I've got my five dots there. All right, for the first worm tunnel, we're going to start off the page. All right, so we're going to go to the top of the side of the page here, and we're going to make a curved line that goes to that dot. And we're going to keep going, almost like a ball, bouncing from dot to dot. And then this last dot's going to come off the page. All right. Now we're going to flip our paper over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side coming off the page to start with and we bounce to the first dot, bounce to the second dot, bounce to the third dot, bounce to the fourth dot, and the fifth dot. And then back off the page. All right, now you're ready to start making worm tunnels. To make the tunnels, you want to go back to the crease every time. So we start at the crease and we just rainbow our line out to the edge. All right, back to the crease, rainbow our line out to the edge. Each time going back to that crease, back to the crease. Now you'll notice we're starting to edge out this one. So I suggest you go back and forth back to the crease each time and kind of move around the page as you're going. And I'm going to move down. Feel free to pause the video at any point so that you get caught up. All right, but I'm moving down, moving down. All right, you're gonna keep going until you have filled the page. When you start to get close to the edge of the page, you're gonna have your tunnels come right off the page. All right, it's gonna look like, like an optical illusion, like it just goes on and on forever. Just keep making those lines, going back to the crease every time. You wanna make sure you're going back to that crease every time. All right, and I'm coming right off the page. Going back to that crease, right off the page. Finishing out these last few tunnels. Your tunnels aren't going to be an identical size, that's okay. All right, you don't have to worry about them matching up in any way. They're supposed to look like they're moving in space. All right, so that's what you should end up with when you're ready to add color. All right, 
One of the most common mistakes students will make is they'll start to rainbow. They'll forget to come back into this crease. So what they'll do is instead of coming to the crease right here, they'll make a rainbow. Where you see how that didn't come down to the crease, right? It's just kind of, they're making rainbows. And that messes up your tunnel. If it doesn't come back to the crease, then the tunnel's not gonna work. See, because now I've come up here and touched that. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do rainbows. Now we're ready to add color and value to our tunnels. The colors are going to add interest, but the value is going to give you that three-dimensional look where your tunnels look like they're moving through space. All right. To accomplish that, I suggest to most students that they start with two colors um, if, for making their patterns. If you feel comfortable working with three or four in a pattern, um, go for it. Um, but if, the, if you're new to this, I would start with two. It's the easiest way to do this. All right, so over here I'm using red and green, some complementary colors. They look nice together, create a lot of contrast. So I'm gonna start by going into the corner and I'm gonna color real dark in the corner. So I'm in the corner and I'm coloring real dark. Really push down on it, all right? And then I'm gonna get lighter. Oh, I was using the wrong green, so I'm gonna switch. And go back over that. So I'm in the corner and I'm going really dark. Then I'm gonna kind of lighten it as I go by putting less pressure on my pencil. All right, so I got kind of a lighter shade here and a darker shade here. All right, when I get to the center of the tunnel, it's going to become almost non-existent. It's so light, you're barely touching the paper. You can even leave that white if you prefer. And then as we go back down the other side, we start to put a little bit more pressure back on our pencil. filling it in. Alright, now I'm showing you an edge of the paper because I'm not going to get that final dark value because this tunnel comes right off the page. If you look at this one here, you'll see that it's dark in both corners, then goes to a medium tone, and then it's really light in the center. You see it here. Dark, medium, light in the center. And you're just going to keep doing that, alternating your color. And that's going to make it look like your tunnels are undulating and moving. When you're finished, you'll have some really psychedelic op art where your worm tunnels really look like they're moving in space. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And I thank you for joining us and hope that you will try another Artsonia activity soon.